Okay, so for your information, um, my background is a bit unique because I did both revenue management and sales. Okay, um, I, I was a revenue manager for three and a half years and then I became director of sales marketing. And I was able to see that two functions are having conflicts. And uh, once again, this conflict is healthy. Why? Because um, when a revenue manager try to increase the price, director of sales should be confident enough to argue, um, making points to say that's too high, we have to decrease a little bit so that we can convert sale. Okay? So when two parties try to find a solution with a different perspective, we will be able to reach the best solution. Okay, so sales and marketing and revenue is very important to have a healthy conflict, I would say, because we have a totally different point of view and perspective. Once again, why? Okay. If you don't start from why, revenue management is so local science. <laughs> Only Ibu Stella can do. Yeah. It's, uh, it's not my business, it's her job, and she has a, such a boring work. And, but if we start from why, it gets more interesting. Okay. So why? Why are we doing revenue management? Because of this. We have uh, quite a few different reasons why we need Ibu Stella. Okay. First reason is fixed capacity, which means we can only sell 179 rooms for the hotel. We can only sell 205 rooms for Ibis. We can only sell 16 meeting rooms for the hotel, only six meeting rooms for Ibis. That's it. Once you sell everything you've got, you cannot have a chance to sell one more. It's very, very different from usual product. You have a, let's say you're a car dealer, okay? You sold 10 cars today, fantastic. Okay, your manager is super happy you already sold 10. You can still sell 11. You can still sell 12. There's no limitation. But some of the industry different. Not only hotel, we have a different industry which has a fixed capacity. Cinema, golf, bowling. It's all limited capacity. You cannot sell unlimited. Okay? So it's very obvious because you have only limited number of product, you have to sell this product into someone who is paying to pay more. That is revenue management. That is how revenue management start to appear. Next reason we need revenue management is perishable inventory. You don't need to worry about this perishable. Okay? Perishable means it's going to be gone. It's going to be gone if you don't sell. So, let's say Today, we have a 170 rooms sold for the Novotel. So we still have a nine rooms, right? Those nine rooms. Can you sell those nine rooms tomorrow? No. It's gone. Tomorrow, we have another 179. So once you lose opportunity to sell today, you will never be able to have a second chance. There's no second chance. That's very important to understand. So you have only one chance, which is today. Either you sell it today or you lost it. Car is different, house is different, bicycle is different. If you cannot sell it today, you can sell it tomorrow. No problem. High fixed cost and low variable cost. We'll talk about it later during the PNL report. Um, cost has a two different costs. One is called fixed cost, which means it doesn't matter you sell one or you sell 100, the cost will be always there. That is called fixed cost. For example, internet. Okay? We pay certain amount of money to internet provider every month. 
It doesn't matter our occupancy is 100% or 0%. It will be same every month. That is called fixed cost. Variable cost is different. If there is a sale, you have expense. If there is no sale, there is no expense. Typical example is food, food cost. If you do not cook, there is no revenue, but there is no cost. Okay? So our cost is variable according to sale. That is what it means. So in our industry, hotel industry, fixed cost is high and variable cost is low. So it doesn't matter we have a 10% occupancy today, we still need you. I cannot ask you to go home. <laughs> we pay a lot of money for our meaning. We still need to maintain the building. We still need to uh, pay for the internet and electricity and our tax and license. So our fixed cost is very, very high. So it's better to sell because anyway, we have a cost. Advanced sale, people book in advance. So that's very important. Why? Because without booking, we cannot forecast. Because we have a booking, we can see the pattern, we can see the trend, we can see the on-book situation, we can compare with the previous years, and then we will be able to come up with our forecast, and then we can arrange our price change. That's why advanced sale is very important for revenue management. Time variable demand, which means demand is not flat. Demand is changing. Okay, so typical example, our hotel, Saturday always full, Sunday always empty. Monday, half empty. Tuesday, a little bit better. Wednesday, a little bit better. Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday. That is our usual pattern according to demand. Okay. Segmentable market. Okay, this is something important to understand. Segmentable market means market can be segmented, which means market can be divided. Market can be categorized by its nature. Okay? We usually segment by business and leisure. We also divide it into individual and group. Why it is important? Because each market has a different behavior. So when we talk about business individual, we call it BI, business individual usually have less sensitivity about price. They don't really care about price. Why? Because it's a business. You have to go, right? You, you, you cannot cancel because of price. You have to stay. Second reason is you don't pay anyway. Your company pay. So, business individual is least price sensitive. Problem is, they book at the last minute. You will never plan your business trip one year in advance. Okay? It doesn't happen. You just decide, okay, next week, can we go to Bali to meet with a travel agent? Can you go to Jakarta to have a meeting with the Jakarta head office? Okay, that is decided one week in advance, maximum two week in advance. We just confirm our trip to Karawang next week. Yeah, one week. Um, leisure is totally opposite. Okay, leisure individual. We are leisure individual, right? When you go your trip to Australia, for example, you plan your trip to Australia. Okay. I'm very sure you check 10 different websites to find out which is cheapest. Even 1,000 rupiah counts. <laughs> yeah, I do the same. Yeah. You become super price sensitive. And do you book your holiday to Australia one week in advance? No, you book one month in advance, two months in advance. Okay? We have a group. We have a business group, leisure group. Leisure group is a group of leisure people, right? So very price sensitive. Business group is group of business people. So not very price sensitive. But business group will have a 
uh, shorter lead time, they will make a booking at the maybe last minute. But leisure group, you have a plan uh, for a long time ago. Why is it important to understand? Because they have a different price they are paying. Yeah. I just said, leisure guests pay less, right? Because we are price sensitive. But we make a booking in advance. Business guests pay more. Problem is, they book at the last minute. So, when you have 100 rooms, ideally, if you want to maximize your revenue, it's better to take only business people, right? Because business people pay more. Okay? But in case you cannot fill the hotel with only business guests, you need leisure guests. Problem is, leisure guests book first. So you need to decide out of 100 rooms, how many rooms you want to sell to leisure. If you have a forecast saying that, I will have a 50 business guests, you will sell 50 rooms for leisure and you will stop. And then the other 50 rooms you will save for business guests, which will come later. If you have a forecast saying business guests will come for 80 rooms, you will sell only 20 rooms for leisure and stop, so that you can sell remaining 80 rooms to business guests. That's what Evo Stella is doing. That is revenue management. Revenue management is not just deciding what is the rate today. Today's rate is very easy to decide. You just check other hotel, how much they are selling, and we can just put similar rate, that's it. So deciding rate is not revenue management. Revenue management is to decide what kind of segment I want to sell, for how many. We have a revenue management golden rules. For your information, we have another GM class only for revenue management. So today, we don't need to go deeper. But before we close the session, I want you to remember some key points of revenue management. First one is, rule one, restrictions never create demand. Okay. I already repeated this many times to some of the HODs. Revenue management doesn't create business. Why I think this is important? Because there are a lot of confusion when it comes to revenue management. Let's say your sales team says, ah, oh, next uh, Friday, we will be able to achieve 95%. Market is very strong. We have a very good own book, and then we are going to close our day at 95%. It's a good day, right? Okay, it's a fantastic day. And then you say, the GM will say, ah, oh, really? Okay, good job, well done, sales. And then speak to revenue manager. Okay, sales said we are going to close at 95%. Can you make sure that we put minimum two nights? Or can you increase the price? Or can you close the superior room type? This happens a lot. This is totally wrong. I will show you why it is wrong. Okay, so this is what your sales team is saying. At the moment, our own book is 60%. We already sold 60% of our room. And then, according to our uh, inquiry and forecast, we are very sure we will close this next Friday at 95%, which means we will have another 35% coming in. This is what uh, sales is saying. Now, GM said, Oh, that's fantastic. Can you close standard room? Okay, because it's a very, very high occupancy day, I want to sell only deluxe 
and sweet. Okay. This 35% forecast for next one week was a combination of standard, deluxe, and sweet. Now, we decided to close standard, right? Okay, because this is a fantastic, very high demand day. Let's close standard. We close. So what's going to happen? So let's say this is a uh, sweet room is 10%, deluxe is 10%, uh, and standard was 15%, okay? Which is 35%, right? And then we close standard. And what's going to happen is we still have deluxe, we have a sweet, so, but we will not have standard. So we have a 10%, 10%. Our forecast was 95. But because we took action from revenue management perspective, our real occupancy will be 80. This is very, very important to understand. Restrictions never create demand. When we are 90%, 92%, 95%, 97%, we still have some rooms to sell, right? So it is not time to exercise revenue management. We are still on sales. We have to sell the remaining rooms. Our job should be, how can we sell the other 5%? That should be our objective. Our forecast is saying 95%. How can we increase 95 to 100? So maybe instead of closing the superior, instead of increasing price, instead of putting the minimum stay, what we need to do is maybe we should drop the rate, <laughs> for example. Or we should open another channel. We should open uh, stop rate. Yeah? It's better to sell the other 5% with a stop rate. Why not? Booking restrictions should be placed only when two cases. Unrestricted demands exceed hotel capacity. So revenue management will be working positively in case we have a more demand than capacity. If our demand says next Friday our forecast is 105%, now it works. Because we, we cannot take 105%, right? So we have to give up 5%. Which one do you want to give up? The cheapest one. So we close standard room to reduce 5%. That is revenue management. Revenue management is only working when demand is higher than our supply, our capacity. Booking restrictions should be placed only when variable cost is higher than the price. Okay. How many times do we hear this? Ah, this booking is too, uh, rate is too low. You hear a lot. Okay. Okay. Uh, don't take it, it's too low. And we, we cannot sell our room at uh, 600,000. Ah, it's a Novotel. Novotel cannot sell 600. Okay. And your forecast is 70%. If you sell one of the room we have at 700,000, our variable cost to clean one room is maybe 50,000. Okay. So if by selling one room at 600, our profit is 600 minus 50. So 550 becomes our profit. So if you say, oh, we cannot sell our room at 600 and give up the booking, it means you have giving up 550,000 rupiah profit per room. So we, we have to give up our sale only if 
variable cost is higher than selling price, which is not a common case in hotel industry. FMB, yes, the food cost is quite high. So if we sell extremely low, sometimes we cannot generate any profit. But room is different. Room cost is very, very low. Some of the hotel room profit is 90%. So it's better to sell at any price if you have a room available. Even stop rate give us profit. There's no reason to refuse stop rate. Rule two, restrictions do not increase client's maximum budget. Let's put it this way. We decide to um, go to Phuket for our HOD outing. And then we try to get the quotation from uh, all Accor hotels in Phuket, which we have done, right? And there was uh, lots of good hotels. We, we had uh, amazing M galleries and we had a mock here. But eventually, we chose the cheapest one. <laughs> Why? Because our budget was fixed. Most of the cases, company's budget, company's event budget or trip budget is approved by someone in the hierarchy. Okay? Could be director, could be CEO, could be general manager, whoever it is, there's an approval process. So, as a PIC, I went to the hotel and I said, my budget is 800,000 per person. Okay, can I get this rate? And our sales person says, uh, no, that's too low. We need a 900. Okay, do you think that PIC will go back to the company and say, um, whoever it is, hey boss, the hotel said you need to pay 900. Do you think it's possible? I don't think that they will do it. There's no reason for the PIC to challenge her or his boss to stay in the hotel. The person will just easily find another hotel with a budget. That's why we have to remember restrictions do not increase client's maximum budget. Always ask for the client budget. They will hardly increase or decrease. That's something also important to remember they will also not decrease. So as a salesperson, it's important to ask, what is your budget? Why? Because maybe their boss, their CEO or director already signed for 700,000 per person. Why we offer 600? We have to ask, what is your budget? Check if it will replace any business with a higher revenue potential. So when we have a group with many rooms, we need to see by taking this group if we are going to give up some other business which has a higher potential of revenue, which means we are now talking about overbooking. Our forecast is 95% and we just received new lead. And this lead has a lot of room. So we are, if we take this booking, we are going to be 110% which means 10% will be gone. And the 10% will be business guests, right? Because they book at the last minute. So we need to see what is the gain, what is the loss, and we need to calculate. It's better to take it or not take it. It is called displacement analysis. It's one of the topic for GM class. Only when a displacement is expected or for our minimum price. When you have a business lead, it doesn't matter if it's a 20 room or 50 room, 60 room, we have to ask what is the budget. And then we just give the price what they want. As long as by taking this booking, we are not full. Still, we have to take it. It doesn't matter how low the price is. But in case, we take this business, we have to give up other business. Now we calculate minimum price we have to offer. That is called displacement analysis. And then we will be able to calculate what is the minimum price we have to charge. Okay? That one, once again, is one of the GM class topic. So we will be able to discuss it uh, in the future. So 
that is the end of today's GM's class. As you can see, I suffered a lot. Okay. Um, this is not easy topic, but I tried to make it easy. Hopefully, you were able to uh, follow. Revenue management uh, is a huge topic. We, we will be able to spend one week very easily. We need to discuss revenue management. But today, what I want you to understand is why we are doing revenue management. Because we, if we cannot set it today, it will be gone. We have a limited number of rooms, so we have to find the right price to sell the limited inventory. We have a different demand according to day of the week or season. That's why we need this revenue management, right? And then please remember two revenue management golden rules. What was the number one? Revenue management never create demand. So we have to wait uh, to exercise revenue management until we are confident that we will be overbooked. We have more demand than inventory. Okay, second golden rule is? Do not expect our client to increase or decrease the budget. It's always important to ask their budget and play with it. Do you have any questions regarding sales, marketing, revenue management? Any questions? Okay, if there's no question, uh, let me close today's section. Uh, please do not forget to subscribe K Hotelier System. <laughs> okay, thank you. See you next week.